Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing part two of the Big Five personality trait series and today we're going to be focusing on conscientiousness. So if you haven't had a chance to check out part one which deals with openness to experience, I encourage you to do that before watching this video, but today we will just jump right into conscientiousness. We'll follow a similar format to part one of this series. We'll go over what conscientiousness is and the different facets that make up the trait of conscientiousness and then go into some interesting research. So let's jump right in. And if you do see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes because I took uh, some notes to give you guys the most accurate information. So if I'm not looking directly at the camera, that's why. So conscientiousness concerns the way that we control, regulate, and direct our impulses. So it has a lot to do with how individuals regulate their impulses. And when we talk about impulses, they're not inherently bad. They can turn into bad consequences uh, if we act on our impulses without thinking, but impulses themselves aren't necessarily a bad thing. Occasionally, we need to make a snap decision and act on impulse, and that's the only option. And so it is helpful to be able to act on impulses appropriately. But impulsive individuals can sometimes be harmful to themselves and to others due to the fact that impulsive desires usually lead to a favorable immediate outcome, but usually an undesired long-term consequence. So for example, you're not really enjoying your job, so impulsively you decide to quit. And it's great in the moment because you feel free and unconstrained from that job that you hated, but long term you've lost your insurance, you don't have your savings anymore, you don't have that steady income. That's just uh, kind of an extreme ex example of acting on impulses can look like. So the benefits of high conscientiousness are usually obvious. Um, conscientious individuals usually avoid trouble and achieve high levels of success through purposeful planning and persistence. So they tend to not act on impulse, but rather take their time to think through and plan. On the negative side of highly conscientious people, they can be fully consumed by work. So they can be total workaholics, not have a good work-life balance. And they can be seen sometimes as boring to others because they are not very spontaneous, they can't act impulsively. On the flip side, those who are low in conscientiousness are usually seen as irresponsible, lacking drive or ambition, but they're usually seen as fun and spontaneous. So now we'll get into the different facets of what actually make up conscientiousness and what those facets mean. So the first facet that we're going to talk about is self-efficacy. And self-efficacy describes um, confidence in one's ability to accomplish the tasks that they've set forward for themselves. So high scores in self-efficacy believe that they have the intelligence and the drive to be able to complete any task that they set out for themselves to do. And low scores do not feel effective um, and may have a sense that they have a low amount of control in their life. So you can think of it as someone who's a high score in self-efficacy believes that they have the ability to do whatever they want in life and that it's all up to them. Whereas low scores usually feel that life just kind of happens to them and they have no control over what, what goes on in their life. The next facet of conscientiousness is orderliness. So orderliness has to do with your organization level. So people who are high in or orderliness are usually well organized. They like to live according to routines and schedules. They like to make lists and plans, whereas low scores tend to be more disorganized and scattered and not beholden to a, a schedule or a set forth list of things that they need to, to get done during the day. Uh, the next facet is dutifulness. Dutifulness describes a person's sense of duty and obligation. So those who are high in dutifulness have a strong sense of moral obligation, whereas people who are low in this find contracts, rules, regulations, anything like that to be overly confining. And so they don't keep to those types of, types of things. They don't feel like they have a duty or moral obligation to follow the rules. Next, we have achievement striving. People who are high in achievement striving strive towards excellence. So they have a drive to be successful and this drive keeps them on track towards lofty goals that they've set for themselves. 
High scorers often have a strong sense of direction in their life, so they know what they want to do, they have these high goals, and they're working towards them. But sometimes extremely high scorers of achievement striving can be too single-minded and obsessed with that lofty goal, and then they become obsessed with their work. Whereas low scores are content to get by with the minimal amount of work and might be seen by others as lazy and they just don't really have as lofty goals as those who are high in this facet do. The next facet that makes up conscientiousness is self-discipline. And self-discipline uh, refers to the ability to persist at difficult and unpleasant tasks. So people who are high in self-discipline are able to start tasks easily and stay on track despite distraction. So they have a lot of discipline in getting themselves to do tasks that they don't necessarily enjoy doing. Those who are low in self-discipline will procrastinate and show poor follow-through. And sometimes they'll even fail to complete tasks, even though they may want to complete them. And finally, our last facet that makes up conscientiousness is cautiousness. And cautiousness describes the ability to think through possibilities before acting. So people who are high scorers on cautiousness will take their time when making decisions and thoroughly think them through. They're more cautious, they're not as impulsive. And those who are low scorers will often say or do the first thing that comes to mind for them without thinking of any alternatives or thinking about the consequences to their actions. So those are the facets that make up conscientiousness and conscientiousness has a lot to do with how we work. And so we see a lot of research of conscientiousness relating to how people perform in school or at their jobs. And people who are high in conscientiousness, we can actually see are correlated with higher pay in their careers. So now I just want to go into some of the interesting research that I found regarding conscientiousness. So individuals that are at higher levels of conscientiousness tend to be more empathetic toward other people. I thought that was kind of interesting and I'm not really sure the rationale behind that. Um, that's a correlational study, so with all correlational studies that does not prove causation, but there was an interesting and high correlation that was seen there that um, individuals with higher levels of conscientiousness uh, do seem to be more em empathetic to other people. Um, the next study that I found that was interesting was that people who demonstrated higher levels of conscientiousness as children were observed to enjoy longer lifespans than other subjects. And I have a couple theories of why this might be. So because people that are high in conscientiousness tend to do better at their jobs, tend to have a higher salary, they may be able to afford better care, so better medical care, and be able to take care of themselves better by feeding themselves better food, living in better places. There could be a correlation there between a higher standard of living and higher pay. But I thought that was interesting that there is this correlation between lifespan and, and high conscientiousness. And uh, then I found some research that said that uh, conscientiousness tends to increase as we get older. There's usually a slight decrease in early and middle adolescence, but when we grow up, we tend to get more conscientiousness with age, which I thought was interesting and makes sense. I think that as we mature and grow older, we tend to understand and appreciate hard work more than we do when we're kids. So to me, that, that tracks and that makes sense. So those were just a couple things that I found research-wise. There's a ton of research on conscientiousness, and if you're interested in this personality trait, I encourage you to check out more research on the topic. I will link below the big five test that you can take, which was also linked in the first video I did on openness to experience. And next time, following the ocean model, we will be talking about extroversion, which is the most researched personality trait in the big five. It's probably one that you've heard about, even if you know nothing about personality psychology, extroversion and introversion have become 
part of daily language and people can usually identify where they fall on that spectrum, but I think it's still interesting to learn about it and uh, learn about the research that has been done on it since there is such a body of research that's been done on, on extroversion. Leave any questions and comments you have below, and I will see you next time for our talk about extroversion. Bye!